I'm Dr. Timothy O'Donnell, and I would like to welcome you to our Roman pilgrimage, in which we are examining the Lenten Stational Churches of Rome. Today in our Roman pilgrimage, we'll be going to the Church of San Clemente, not up on a mountain today, but descending down into the valley to the Church of St. Clement. St. Clement was the third successor to St. Peter and Pope of the Roman Church. The church is filled with all sorts of treasures of a historical and artistic nature. Beyond a doubt, this is one of the most archaeologically interesting churches in all of Rome. It is also one of the most ancient, being one of the original 25 titular parishes for the Diocese of Rome. This church, or basilica, is presently in the hands of the Irish Dominicans. There have been at least three churches built on this site, going all the way back to the very first century of the Christian era, down to the 12th century. The Irish Dominicans were entrusted with this church in the year 1667 and have had a continuous presence there since that time. Significant excavations underneath the present basilica were carried out by the Irish Father Maluli, who began excavations under the basilica back in 1857. These fascinating excavations take us back to the very beginning of Christianity in the city of Rome. The ancient church, referred to as the Titulus Clementis, was mentioned as existing by the Roman Council, which started way back in 499. This church was dedicated to the memory of Pope St. Clement I, who reigned as pontiff in the city of Rome from the year 88 to 97. The church was built during the reign of Pope Sericius, who was pope from 384 to 399. This church of Pope Sericius was actually built over a cluster of first century buildings. There is no doubt that the early Roman house over which this church was built would have been the spot where the early Christians would have gathered to worship from the end of the first century to the beginning of the second century. The present church, however, that we see before us today was built in the 11th century on top of the fourth century church on the exact spot which marked the first century home. The present church, however, rises nearly 60 feet above the original level, which takes us back to classical antiquity. There is a true sense of medieval Rome to be found in this church. As we enter into the atrium with its beautiful fountain dating back to the 12th century, we literally step back into the Middle Ages. Rows of antique columns and the beauty of the cosmetesque pavement take us back to the early spirit of the Middle Ages. The choir enclosure inside the church has lovely panels of white and different colored marbles that are filled with symbols used in Christian antiquity. The vine is very important as a symbol of the Eucharist. The dove, symbol of the Holy Spirit, and fishes are all presented to us with simplicity yet delicate beauty. The choir in this church was given by Pope John II and dates unbelievably back to the year 535. It is probable that it was brought up from the earlier church which existed at the lower level to the present basilica at the end of the 11th century. This earlier church had to be rebuilt because it had been terribly damaged by the devastation brought by the Normans when they sacked Rome in the year 1084. It was an effort to try to liberate Pope Gregory VII from the clutches of Henry IV, but sadly they did a great deal of damage to the city. Of particular importance to us in this church are the relics preserved under the high altar. Those of Clement the Pope are preserved there, along with St. Ignatius of Antioch, the great martyr of the Colosseum, who was cast to the lions and wanted to be ground to be the sweet Eucharistic bread of Christ. The apse mosaic is also of great note. It presents to us the cross of Christ as the tree of life in the form of a blooming acanthus plant. Waters of life flow beneath it, allowing the new creation and abundance of grace flowing from the tree of life. There are 12 doves which symbolize the apostles and the faithful which perch peacefully on this cross. The different figures in black and white represent the four doctors of the Western Church, 
St. Augustine, St. Jerome, St. Gregory, and St. Ambrose. There is also a magnificent triumphal arch, which has a mosaic at the top in which Christ is blessing, surrounded by the symbols of the evangelists. Lower down on the left, we can see St. Paul, St. Lawrence, and also the prophet Isaiah. St. Clement was the fourth pope, and there were a number of church writers, particularly in the second century, who speak of him as being a contemporary of St. Peter and Paul. He is most famous to us because he is the one who wrote the authoritative papal letter settling a schismatic dispute that had arisen in the church in Corinth. This letter, which dates back to the year 96, was read as an authoritative scripture in the church at Corinth as late as the third century. It is a very important and early testimony to the esteem and the authority which the Bishop of Rome had in the church at that time. As one journeys down into the fourth century church, one can see numerous ruins would take us back to the very house of Clement himself, streets of Rome dating back to the first century, which were very possibly damaged by the early Roman fire. We enter the Christian dwelling, which takes us back to the very first century, and one can still hear in the distance the running water of the ancient Roman sewer, the Cloca Maxima. Here one can easily recall the early bygone days and the heroism of those first Christians who gathered together in the streets of Imperial Rome and sought to convert an empire and build a new Christian civilization. At this time in Lent, let us turn our attention once again in prayer on this great day of atonement and seek once again forgiveness from the Lord in the words of the psalmist. O Lord, reprove me not in your anger, nor chastise me in your wrath. Have pity on me, O Lord, for I am languishing. Heal me, O Lord, for my body is in terror. My soul, too, is utterly terrified. But you, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, save my life. Rescue me because of your kindness. For among the dead, no one remembers you in the netherworld. Who gives you thanks? I am wearied with sighing. Every night I flood my bed with weeping. I drench my couch with my tears. My eyes are dimmed with sorrow. They have aged because of all my foes. Depart from me, all evildoers, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord has accepted my prayer. All my enemies shall be put to shame in utter terror. They shall fall back in sudden shame. Thank you. 